Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, greetings once again. This is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. I'm so glad you could join us this week on the Netcast. Uh, I tell you, we got some exciting things to talk about. Uh, Speakfaith.tv, as you know, is our Roku channel, and things are going really great with that. I'm telling you, Pastor J.B. Whitfield, his program has added tremendously to our lineup on Speakfaith.tv. So I encourage you to sign up for Speakfaith.tv. Now, here's what I'd like for you to do. Go to Speakfaith.tv. I'll put it up here on the screen. Okay, that's the URL. Go there, and in the upper right-hand corner, there's a little picture of a Roku box. If you want to click on that, you can uh, be taken to the Roku site and order a Roku box and they've got some great deals coming up here during the you know the Thanksgiving Black, Black Friday uh, thing what the, that they do for uh, selling you know at a discount and that kind of thing so I encourage you to check that out uh, and get you a Roku box because I'm telling you speedfaith.tv we've got a lot of great programming Dr. Jerry Seville Dr. Larry Hutton our program Pastor Ed Taylor, my pastor from Faith and Victory Church, and now Pastor J.B. Whitfield. Whoo, I'm telling you, good stuff there on speakfaith.tv. Now, um, let me get into my tablet here. You know, I want to mention this. I was I, using the tablet reminded me. Um, I use eSword on my PC as an electronic Bible, and I highly recommend that. It's really, really great, and the newest version is has a lot of really exciting additions to it, and uh, the ability, for instance, to download Bibles, other versions of Bibles, into eSword for right, right from within eSword. All you have to do is go up to the top menu, click there on adding, I think it's called download, and then you click on the Bible that you want. They've got a lot of free different uh, versions and so forth. Click on that and then click download again. It'll download and install it all in one, you know, process. And I'm telling you, great tool. That's available at e-sword.net. And I'll put that up here on the screen, e-sword.net. Then there's also uh, a Bible that's available here for tablets. Now, you can't use the eSword Bible on the tablet because it's a whole different operating system. You know, PCs have a different operating system than the uh, tablets do. My tablet, for instance, is Android. Some people have uh, iPads and, and all kinds of different things. But the great thing about this particular tablet uh, which is an Android tablet, I use something called Cadre Bible. And I'll put that up on the screen as well, CadreBible.com. And uh, it's really nice. I don't know if you can see it here. Try to keep the, the shiny light there from showing, but uh, it, it gives you a nice big print. <laughs> you can adjust it to where it's easy to read. I like that. At any rate, uh, it's it's not free. eSword is free. Cadre Bible is inexpensive but it's not free. But I encourage you, get the Word of God wherever and however you can get it. And if you get it on a tablet like this, it's really easy to read, easy to study. Good idea for you to do. All right, we've been talking about uh, the topic of what are you thinking? Okay, what are you thinking? And we're going to continue with that and uh, maybe finish up today We'll see. But I want to go back to Romans chapter 12. That's where we left off, Romans chapter 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Some translations say your spiritual service. 
Um, both are good translations. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. To, uh, and I'm going to read this in context again because I got, I got thinking about renewing your mind. That's what we want to talk about today. And I just about spun off in that direction, but let's read through the whole verse here. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, believers, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man among you the measure of faith. Not a measure of faith. We talked about this, the measure of faith, okay? But the, the key phrase I want to center up on for this particular netcast is renewing your mind. You've got to renew your mind to the Word of God. You've got to make a decision, a quality decision. You know what a quality decision is? Brother Kenneth Copeland talks about a quality decision. He says that a quality decision is a decision that you make that you will not turn from. You will not shirk. You will keep to that decision. It locks in. I'm telling you, lock into that decision. That's a quality decision. I'll tell you one quality decision that I personally have made. Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. He has been raised from the dead. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. He makes intercession for us. Woo! That is a quality decision that I have made. And because of that, I'm born again. Romans 10, verses 8, 9, and 10. Remember, we read that. What saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And of course, that word saved, as I always remind you, means saved, delivered, healed, protected, made whole, spirit, soul, body, financially and socially, and delivered from temporal evil. You're born again if you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord. But see, that was a quality decision. That's a great example of a quality decision. Another quality decision you need to make is to renew your mind. Renewing your mind is something you need to do on a daily basis. I kid you not, a daily basis. Some people say, well, yeah, but Dr. Bill, you know, I go to church. I go, you know, at least once a month. And uh, I do pretty well. See, it's not a quality decision to renew your mind. You need to go to church our church, we have Sunday morning service, we have a Sunday evening service, we have a Wednesday evening service, all right? I go to all those services. You say, oh, Dr. Bill, that's a lot of church. Yeah. And you know, used to, back when I was growing up, going to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, that was just normal. That was average. Now, if you go Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, it's like, what are you, some kind of fanatic? <laughs> And some churches just, just quit even having services during Wednesday night or, or Sunday night. You know, they're, they're doing good if they have one Sunday morning service. I mean, come on, folks. That's not enough exposure to fellowship together. We're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some. Amen particularly so much the more as you see the day approaching. See, I see the day approaching. I see that we are in the last of the last days. I see that this is a time more than ever that we need to commit to the Word of God and to fellowshipping together and to the protection of our local church and our pastor guiding us and helping us and teaching us. Now, I'm not a pastor. I have pastored churches, but that is not what I'm called to do. I'm called to be a teacher, which is what I'm doing right now, is teaching the Word of God to you. I greatly respect pastors, particularly my pastor, Pastor Ed Taylor. Praise God, he does a tremendous job under a lot of pressure and a lot of different things that I've seen him. But he stays steady. He stays constant. He continues to teach the Word. And that's what you need is that steadying, stable influence. A pastor is a shepherd. 
You've heard that phrase, that term. Think about what a shepherd does for sheep. I'm talking about in the natural. A shepherd finds the best field with the, the tastiest grass to eat, the cleanest, clearest water. He protects them from outside influences like the wolf that might want to eat the sheep. He protects them and he encourages them. Maybe if they need to move to a different field to get better grass. You know, sheep follow. Shepherds lead. And our pastor leads us, guides us, protects us when all these squirrely, greasy grace doctrines started coming out. Our pastor stood up and said, wait, hold on. No, that's not scriptural. And here's why. See, that's the protection you get from going to a local church, that solid foundation, that encouragement, that strengthening that you get from a local pastor and local church. Watching somebody on TV, even this netcast, is not enough. It's a great supplement. It's a great benefit. It's part of renewing your mind, but it's not the local church. I, I'm just, I, I'm sensing that a lot of you need encouragement with regard to the local church. Encourage your pastor. Encourage that church to do what it's called to do. Your pastor has the vision for that local church. The Word of God says, write the vision, make it plain, write it upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. Why don't you think about that? The pastor's given the vision. He writes it down. You read it and you run with it. You know what it means to run with it? <laughs> that means get involved, participate, become part of causing that vision to come to pass for that local church. Now our church is very unusual. We're a small church in some ways. I've had people tell me, says, Dr. Bill, man, uh, the church is so small. Yeah, but I tell you, if you look at the number of people we're reaching because of the videos that we have, and, and we get the statistics. We know how many people are watching. Thousands and thousands. If you counted them in the number of the people attending our church, we've got a huge church. Amen? So don't look at the numbers. Numbers are not an indicator of success. Okay, just because a church is huge doesn't mean that it's doing what it's called to do, that it's fulfilling its vision. But look at a church that is doing something for God, supporting missionaries, helping preach the gospel around the world, reaching out with video and audio messages like on the internet or through radio programs or through uh, YouTube videos or whatever, reaching out, reaching out, reaching out all the time because we are called to go into all the world, preach the gospel unto every creature he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that doesn't shall be damned. Hey, that's life or death. Okay, that's life or death. That's how important this is. And it also says in Mark chapter 16 that as we preach the gospel to the whole world, that the Lord will be with us confirming the word preached. So that means we've got to preach the word. Confirming the word preached with signs following. So that local church should be a supernatural miracle place. We call Faith and Victory Church My Miracle Place. As a matter of fact, we even registered that domain name. If you go to MyMiraclePlace.com or MyMiraclePlace.org, either one, you'll find Faith and Victory Church. Now, of course, the regular address is fvc.org, which is very easy to remember, Faith and Victory Church, fvc.org. But My Miracle Place, the reason we got that is because that's part of the vision for Faith and Victory Church. We are a place of miracles. We preach the Word and we flow in the Spirit. We preach the Word, we flow in the Spirit. That's part of the vision of Faith and Victory Church. You say, well, Dr. Bill, you're talking about your church. Yeah, that's because I'm a member of my church. I know about my church. Your church, where you go to hear the Word of God, 
should be just as alive and just as real to you as my church is to me. And you ought to be telling folks about it. You ought to be encouraging people to attend. Now, this is if your church is preaching the uncompromised word of faith, all right? If your church is, is dead and dried up and about to be blown away, okay, don't invite folks. But you shouldn't be going there either. Yeah, but my family went here all my life. Well, bless their hearts. But for you and your house, you need to serve the Lord. You need to get somewhere where you can hear the word of God preached. That's what we're talking about here with this particular verse of Scripture. And that is that we renew our mind to the Word of God. Renew your mind. Don't just fill it full of TV and music and junk that doesn't matter. Renew your mind. See, we, we talked about this word renew actually is like a renovation. Like you renovate a house. You tear down the old walls, you put up new walls. You tear out the old floor, you put in a new floor. I, I, you know, I've told you this before. I like to watch uh, these shows on uh, uh, Home and Garden Channel, HGTV, and uh, DIY TV, you know, the do-it-yourself channel. I'm not one to do a whole lot of that myself. <laughs> I know how to, but I tend to not do that. But I love to watch the transformation of an old you know worn out house they'll come in and they'll tear everything out and they do what they call house crashers you know they come in and in a weekend they completely renovate that house the renovation is when they take out all the old junk and they put in all this new shiny nice stuff <laughs> that is just awesome and you go, man, I'd love to live there. But what it used to look like, you're like, I don't think so. <laughs> but I'm telling you, that's the kind of renovation we're talking about. You may have a mind full of junk. But if you tear all that junk out, renew, renovate your mind with the Word of God. That means hearing the Word of God on a regular basis. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Hear it, hear it, hear it. Take heed what you hear. See, the Bible says two things about that. There's two different Gospels, and both of them share the same story in the life of Jesus. One verse says, take heed how you hear. The other verse says, take heed what you hear. And I like that. I'm glad it was put both ways. Take heed what you hear means what you listen to is important. What you hear on a regular basis. If I'm hearing the Word of God preached to me on a regular basis, that's important. That's taking heed what you hear. Take heed how you hear. That may mean you go into work, you know, and you're... My, this happens to me sometimes. I'm sitting in my office, and people will just come right in my office, and they'll start unloading all this junk on me. If you heard about this, you heard about that, this is terrible, that's terrible, blah, 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 blah. Well... What they're saying isn't feeding my spirit. What they're saying is not lifting me up. But if I take heed how I hear, okay? If I take heed how I'm hearing this stuff, I can say that doesn't line up with the Scripture. The Word of God says, and see, I'm taking what I'm hearing and I'm filtering it through the Word of God. And now I've got the opportunity to share back well, you know, uh, have you thought about this? I've had people at work tell me, you just have a Pollyanna attitude. You're always talking about positive way of looking at this and the positive way of looking at that. You know, uh, we, we heard through the news that Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center was going to be laying off people, quite a few people. And some of them were going to be in the IT department. Well, that's bad news. That's bad news for the people, <laughs> bad news for the economy, Bad news for Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and that area. But you know what I did? I turned it around and I said, well, we've got openings where I work at High Point Regional Health System for people in IT. So maybe some of those folks will come over here and get a job. And so they'll get a job and we'll get a position filled of somebody that we need to do the job for an IT support person. And everybody looks at me like, what? <laughs> How 
are, how can you take something like that and twist it into something good? Well, I'm not twisting it. I'm looking at it differently. It's the old thing of a, a, a glass half empty and a glass half full. Same amount of level of liquid in the glass, but some people look at it and say it's half empty. They have a negative view. Some people say it's half full. They have a positive view. Well, it's not just the positive or negative view that's the point here. It's the way or how you hear, how you receive, what you think about that makes the difference. What are you thinking? See, how are you approaching life? How are you thinking about things? That's a key. It's important. And how you think about things, how you hear things, how you interpret things, that makes a difference in how you're going to come out in your life. I guarantee it. You say, I don't know, but Dr. Bill, that, that's hard. No, it's not. Not if you get into a lifestyle of being positive and applying the Word of God to everything you do. Everything that I put my hand to prospers. I've got that promise from the Word of God. So, I prosper in everything that I do. See what I'm saying? Well, whew, we're out of time. We're going to have to go. I want you to write me here at Word of Faith Ministries, our address, Word of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 5213-5213, High Point, North Carolina. Our zip code is 27262. I encourage you to write me. And those of you that have contributed to the ministry. Oh man, I appreciate that and I thank you for that. It is it is a blessing and it is actually humbling that you think enough of this ministry to support us financially. It's a blessing. And I guarantee you we'll get you know new equipment and new things that we can use to preach the gospel. It certainly doesn't go into my pocket. It goes into the ministry, nonprofit organization, Word of Faith Ministries to help preach the gospel and to pay for you know the, the bandwidth and the things that we use uh, to do what we do here on Word of Faith Ministries and on the Word of Faith Netcast. Okay? You can also write me at my email address, that is Dr. Bill D R B I L L at W O F M dot O R G. And by the way, our website, W O F M Dot .org is a resource, it's a tremendous resource of, of things that you can benefit from to renew your mind to the Word of God. So I encourage you to check that out. Join us again next time. Remember until then to fulfill the Word of God. The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.